Taping of it will show right away. How are we looking? We looking alright? <laughs> Hi guys. I'm just wait a minute or two just so we can get more people signed on and then we'll get started. Say hi, Fee. This is my little dog model today. Hi, Paul, friends. <laughs> Fee, do you want to say hi? Hi guys, my name is Yuri. I'll be hosting your Pet Nutrition 101 today. Um, before we get started, if you're always, if you RSVP'd on Eventbrite for today's event, um, don't forget that there's we're giving ten dollars off if you purchase uh, thirty dollars worth of uh, food along with a free bone broth. Um, so you can get actually one of these along with your purchase or a beef one. Um, in addition to the promo we're also having uh we have a pet quiz a pet nutrition quiz that's linked on our highlights so don't forget to tag us tag us um so tag healthy spot so you can win a enter for a chance to win a hundred dollar uh price pack um when it comes to pet nutrition um in regards to that let me introduce fiona and the reason I have Fiona with me today is because she's actually been with me my whole healthy spot journey. Um, and she's a beast when it comes to eating these little healthy spot uh, free shred lamb treats. And then you can go ahead and find these either in store or online. Um, and we have lamb liver, chicken breast, um, we have quite the variety. All right, so let's get started with the pet nutrition. Um, I'll start off introducing myself. Uh, my name is Uriel Chavez, and I've been with Healthy Spot actually completing a 10 year anniversary this month. Um, I started with Healthy Spot because I had an English Bulldog, and I started to nerd out for pet nutrition, and this is where I'm at now. Um, I love what I do, it makes my job super easy. Um, I don't currently have a pet anymore, but my dog got me into this industry and he lived up to 12 years with no health issues whatsoever. Um, so I love this stuff. All right, so let's get started. Um, here goes the $10 off any uh, $30 purchase. And then there's also a code that you can use in store online. And it's gonna be W, F as in Frank, H as in home, and the word food on it. All right, so let's get started. What is raw food? So before we get started, here's uh, three pointers that you should actually look at anytime you're purchasing food. And the reason is you may mainly wanna look at the transparency behind a pet food brand, how everything's sourced, and then what's the meat content and the carbohydrate percentage in your foods. Those are big factors when you're purchasing food and the reason is that's actually what bulks up your dog's poop and um, allows your dog to actually eat better. So let's get into raw food. All right, so benefits of raw food. Main thing with raw food is there's a lot of controversy behind feeding raw diets, whether there's bacteria and whatnot, but the key thing when purchasing a raw diet, especially when it's commercially purchased, all the pet food brands that we actually carry, um, we ensure that they have no pathogens in them, which is one of the biggest concerns with pet parents. Um, I'll bring in some examples just so you guys can kind of see. Example, I'll start off with Primal. This is an easy one to talk about. Um, the key, key thing with a raw diet is it's the one food that's high in meat, high in moisture, and it's not processed. Um, 
when your dog when you start to feed high moisture diets you're hydrating your dog through its food that's one thing two when you feed high meat and basically the food becomes more bioavailable and bioavailability just means how much can your dog actually break down of its food and absorb um, when they can absorb most of their food the key thing that happens is your dog actually poops less and the poop doesn't smell which is weird but amazing um, but the cool thing is these brands actually go above and beyond to show you that these are complete and balanced and actually safe for your dog so what makes a commercial food different than like a home cook or actually a raw a homemade raw diet is the fact that these are complete and balanced um, so everything that your dog needs actually in there there's a supplement added to it and you don't have to add at the end of the day you don't really have to add anything back into your dog's diet so let me touch on actually a couple brands so what are the brands that we carry actually is there a way to lower my comments no all right so we carry three different brands of raw so one being primal the other one being stella and chewies and your third one being small batch there isn't one brand that's better over another. Each brand just has slight differences that may cater to different clients. So I'll give you an example. Primal, if you look at the bag in the front, it has a percentage and it tells you how much of the diet is actually meat and the other percentage is your carbohydrates. Um, if you notice, it's right around 20%, which is what you're looking for in dog food. That's again, what bulks up your dog's poop. So the less carbs, the better it is. Um, another brand that we carry is Small Batch. And one thing that they do different is they're actually locally sourced and locally made. So they will only source in California and Oregon to keep their price point down and their batches fresh. And then your last one is Stella and Chewy's. This is one of like the starters to the raw game um theirs is highest in meat so 95 percent meat five percent fruits and veggies um and then they do a whole kill step where they get rid of all bacteria so that concern that everyone has about raw food having bacteria each brand takes an extra step to make sure that there's no pathogens um they do something called hpp um it's a high pressure processing basically they shoot high pressure cold water um, the pressure is so high that it basically gets rid of any pathogens living in the food. So it keeps everything uh, safe and sound for your pups. Um, these are all live stages. You can feed them to any of your, of your dogs. And that's actually a great point. All the foods that we carry are actually all live stages. Um, you can feed this to any dog, even a puppy. Um, ideally, if you have a puppy, normally your feeding recommendations are just... Um, higher dosages just because they burn through their food so much faster um, all right so let's go into the next one so let's go into raw alternatives so what's the difference between a raw diet and a raw alternative food your raw alternative foods are actually what's in between a raw food and um i would say maybe like a kibble it's the in between um both categories and what they are they're just minimally processed in comparison to either a kibble or a raw diet um some of the benefits of feeding a raw alternative diet are you'll end up feeding a food that's less processed and what i mean by less processed is the food goes through a lower cooking temperature to ensure that there's um nutrients still in your food. The other thing is most of these foods will ask you to add uh, moisture into the diet. And the concept again is you're hydrating your dog as you're feeding. And the other thing is there's more meat in your food in comparison to like some of the kibbles. So let's go into some of the foods. Some of, so some of the raw food alternative uh, brands that we carry are Honest Kitchen, um, Zeewee Peak would be another one and we have grandma lucy's so concept behind these or the difference between this and feeding like a kibble is 
you have to add water to some of these diets and they turn into like a mushy consistency. Differences between this and like a kibble is you're feeding no more meals. Um, so what are meals? Meals are a meat version. It's meat in a powdered version that gets put into dog food. There's different levels of them. Obviously we carry like the higher quality ones and you know they're higher quality because everything's um how do you say everything's um specific when it comes to an ingredient panel a lot of times when you read ingredient panels if you look generic ingredients where they're generalizing the animal that means that they can't pinpoint what kind of animal they're using in their food so uh let me see all right so let's talk about these brands all right so honest kitchen grandma lucy's and zeewee beef um both of these are very identical the difference is there's no more meals in your food you're adding water and it's minimally processed in comparison to a kibble so what do i mean by that that means that they're cooked at lighter temperatures ideally a kibble is cooked above like 200 degrees and it's cooked multiple times um these are cooked at lighter temperatures and then because you're adding water to it you're hydrating your dog through its food. So that's those are actually some of the the benefits that you'll see even feeding with a raw diet. As you start feeding foods like this, um, you'll notice your dog actually drinks significantly less water. Reason behind it is you're hydrating your dog. Think of it like us. Um, you eat a mango or you eat a, I don't know, uh, what is it, a papaya, watermelon. Those are all full of moisture and you're hydrating your body back into. So same concept with dogs. Um, other difference is you're also feeding higher meat content with these foods in comparison to a kibble. Um, I can actually show you Zeewee Peak. One of the things that really makes it different in comparison to a lot of brands is this is solely strictly meat. Um, because it's solely and strictly meat that's been air dried, you have a jerky consistency. So this is actually great for finicky dogs, dogs underweight, um, dogs with extreme or severe allergies. And the reason is um, food is way more simplified. You're solely feeding meat and it's a single source. So it's just the, the one chicken. And they used everything about the chicken. So prized organ, liver, kidneys, muscle. Um, and then they use um, a small percentage of botanicals just to ensure all the vitamins and minerals are added back into your dog's food. Um, all right. Let's go into the next section. Let's talk a little bit about kibble and what makes Healthy Spot kibble different to any other brands. All right, so going into food again, everything's minimally processed. And in addition to that, um, being that it's minimally processed, we also ensure that all our ingredient panels are, we know what we're feeding our dogs. So, I'll give you three brands that we can actually go off of. So we have Open Farm, Stalin Chewies, and Nulo. We carry a little bit of everything for everyone. It's fine, okay for sensitive. Um, so we carry a little bit of everything for everyone. What's the difference between all these foods? Again, each brand has a slight difference that'll cater to different clients. So an example would be, um, Open Farm is one of the foods that we carry that is completely ethically sourced. Um, if they can't trace the animal's welfare that goes into the food, it doesn't go in their food. We're really looking into transparency when it comes to dog's foods. Um, the other thing that they do, they do bunch of little things they're very earth friendly um, everything's TerraCycle so you can recycle all their materials Stella and Chewy's aside from doing raw they also do a kibble the beauty of this is um, again the kibble is actually minimally processed in a sense where it's baked where most kibbles are actually cooked at extremely high temperatures um, aside from it just being baked, um, they actually throw freeze-dried pieces. So freeze-dried pieces are pieces of meat and tiny little bits. And what that's doing is it's changing the game with kibble. It's actually adding more meat into your dog's diet um, to ensure you can bring that carbohydrate percentage down. 
Um, and then the last one I want to show you guys, it's Nulo. So the cool thing about Nulo is they do use grains for the consumer who's actually using for a whole grain um, or grain options. Now the difference between the stuff that we carry and you can find elsewhere is we really ensure that if you're using grains, you're using whole grains. Um, there's this whole thing about grains being bad for pets or people frown upon uh, grains, but grains are actually bad. Um, one of the biggest things that grains provide are fiber. Um, they help dogs with energy. Um, but at the end of the day, is we want to make sure that if you're feeding something with grains, you're again, you're feeding under 20% carbohydrates but these are all great foods and then they use whole grains which is pretty cool all right and then let me just make sure i think i might have all right so before i jump into supplements i think these went out of order but i'm gonna talk to you guys about a category that's growing super rapidly in the pet industry and that's the home home cooked uh, or lightly cooked category. Now the concept behind this is you're feeding fresh food. At the end of the day, that's the whole concept behind food. You wanna free fresh food as most and possible as you can. So aside from having raw diets, your next category after a raw diet, it's a home cooked diet. And the concept is you're feeding fresh food in a sense where you're ensuring that your dogs these brands basically do a lightly cooked food and the reason behind it is if you're still not 100 percent in a raw diet this is where you can fall into and the concept behind lightly cooked or completely cooked is that's their way of getting rid of pathogens now what separates our lightly cooked foods or completely cooked foods from other brands is the fact that these are still replicating what a raw diet is but they're cooking it to ensure that there's no pathogens and there's uh the safety concern basically goes out the window um i'll give you an example with small batch so small batch aside from knowing that raw is the way to go they brought out this lightly cooked and all they do is run warm water to ensure that they can get rid of the pathogens before any of these foods actually go out into the the industry they ensure that they test everything and as soon as their test results come back and everything comes out in clear, then that's when the consumer can purchase it. That's small batch. Um, pure dog food is a pretty cool food. They're actually local. They're based out of uh, Culver City. But one of, this is actually very similar to some of the foods that are out in the industry. But what's really different about this brand, and they actually make it, they show you guys is, again, all their carbs are staying low so you're still feeding your dog fresh food keeping the carbs down and then your dog actually poops less which is pretty cool all right and then the last one this home cooked one is one of my favorites um <laughs> this home cooked one is one of my favorites and uh this is open farm so they also do the kibble but the concept of this one is it's a lightly cooked food and the, this is great for finicky dogs. Um, again, all the ethical sourcing, um, but what dog doesn't like a home cooked diet? All right, let's check the next slide. We went over those. All right, let's talk about supplements. Um, so I picked out a handful of supplements that I think are great. And then the reason I picked these out is because these you can feed to any dog and actually most dogs do fairly well with. So I'll start off with immunity. Um, the two main ones I brought in for immunity are actually goat's milk and mushrooms. Um, I'll start off with mus uh, goat's milk. And the reason is, um, how do supplements basically work? Not all dogs are the same, so some dogs have to get um, supplementation whether it's for skin and coat whether it's digestion a lot of the times if a dog is on a great diet um, just like us if we're eating super healthy there's times where you may have to supplement just a tad bit um, and this is where th these supplements come in so the first one I'll start off with is actually goat's milk um, the reason is uh, 
dude, this is like a quadruple whammy. It has everything that you need. Um, the fact that it's completely raw, it's your most natural source of probiotics. So this is an immediate effect. This is actually a long-term supplement that you would have to do. But the beauty of this is it's a complete food. It's a natural source of probiotics. Um, there's actually um, like anti-cancer fighting agents in here. Um, what else? For cat owners, this is your natural source of taurine, which is pretty dope. And last, this is a great way to add actually moisture or some freshness into your dog's food. Um, especially anyone who's doing kibble, you wanna ensure that somehow you add some kind of moisture into your dog's kibble. And this is a fantastic way of doing it. Um, so that's goat's milk. Um, the other one is mushrooms. So mushrooms are a great immune booster. These are great for any dog or any person who wants to supplement more into their dog's diet. But the beauty of these is, um, again, they help fight cancer. Um, these are great for allergies, especially environmental allergies. Um, crazy part is I started taking this stuff myself when I learned about it and it totally suppressed my allergies. So this is definitely a good one. And your feeding portions on this are actually, they go a long way. You do like a quarter of a teaspoon, which is about that big per 25 pounds. Um, but these help fight cancer. They help the nervous system. They help um, autoimmune disorders. Um, they help all kinds of stuff. So this is another good one. It's like a, you're all in one inclusive. For dogs who have extremely sensitive tummies, because that's probably one of the biggest questions that comes up. The perfect form is a great uh, supplement. All they're using is natural herbs that actually help bind up your dog's poop. And this is stuff that like, I mean, technically you and I would eat. So there's like papaya leaf, there's plantain leaves, there's a uh, pumpkin seed, there's all kinds of good stuff in here. This is cool, within like one or two time use, um, you can see a, a change in your dog's stools. Um, this is also great for dogs with sensitive stomachs or even IBD sometimes. Um, it's a powder, you just mix it into your dog's food. And then, is that touch on bone broth? <laughs> um, here's an easy one too, since uh, you get a free bone broth if you <laughs> sign up to this. But um, bone broth is great. It actually, you can just pour it into a bowl and you can actually feed it to your dog on its own. Or um, you can pour it on kibble, you can pour it on any of the foods that I just showed you guys. The benefits of this is adding moisture um, two, it helps detoxify the liver. And three, which is the most important one, uh, it helps leaky gut. So it helps with dogs that have any issues with their stomach. Um, a lot of issues that come with the stomach, they actually go into like allergies, um, certain symptoms and all that good stuff. But this is a great easy add-on that you can always do with your dog's food. All right, let's see. All right, so key, key thing when transitioning uh, whenever you try a new food, I would say part of the reason why most dogs tend to have uh, either runny stools or soft stools when they're switching is because the transition period isn't uh, thoroughly fulfilled. So what I mean by that is anytime you're transitioning a dog, it should be over a 10 day time frame or so. For a cat, it can actually vary. I know cats are super finicky, so uh, with them it, it may be longer, it may be shorter, but normally it's way longer. Uh, that 10 day free, uh, time frame for transitioning a dog, uh, normally your first three days, day one through three, you wanna do 75% of the old food and 25% of the new food. In those three days, if your dog's stools becomes soft or runny, you continue in those three days and you can supplement or you can just uh, stay in those three days until your dog's poop firms up and then you can transition to day four through six um, and in days four through six, you should be doing 50% of the food, of the old food and 50% of the new food. Again, if your dog does well in those uh, next three days, uh, four through six, then you can move on to day seven through nine. And then seven through nine, you're doing 75% of the new food, 25% of the old food. By day 10, you should be good. Um, if for some reason you run into like a little slip up where your dog's having soft stools, um, there's a bunch of supplements you can use, but uh, Perfect Form's a great one. Um, Primal makes these elixirs that are great. They all have probiotics in them. Um, they all have bone broth in them. And there's a specific one for 
uh, digestion. This is a joint one. Um, a trick to get cats uh, to try new food, I know cats are super finicky and everything's on their term, is try the sticking of the paw. So what I mean by that is, if you have food out, try to stick your cat's paw into it, and because they're self-groomers, it gets them to lick it off, and then, um, otherwise, if you just put food out, uh, half of the time they won't even go for it. All right, let's go into All right, let me just confirm. All right, so I'm going to answer some questions. But before I answer some questions or dive into those, um, I just want to remind you guys that there's $10 off a $30 purchase of food. Um, don't forget to use the code. In addition to that, don't forget to tag us um, with your, what is it, your nutrition quiz? Mm -hmm. With your nutrition quiz. Um, that'll get you entered into the $100 gift pack um, for food. All right, so let me dive into these questions. Um, these are preset questions that were sent in, so I'll start off with the first one. Thoughts on homemade food for uh, fur babies? Um, this is from at underscore Karen Park underscore. Dude, uh, home cooked foods are great. Um, you're adding freshness into your dog's diet. Um, the key key thing is if you're making your own dog's food, you have to make sure that it's complete and balanced. I would say that's probably the number one reason why most vets frown upon either raw diets or home cooked diets. It's because they're not complete and balanced and long term dogs tend to have deficiencies. So if you are going to make your own home cooked food, just make sure you have a supplement um, that you can add into your dog's diet to ensure that it's complete and balanced. Certain foods actually make your life easy. like. Honest Kitchen, they, aside from, this is like a complete and balanced one, but they also make uh, one that's just solely fruits and veggies, and it has a supplement pack added to it. And that's for the consumer who wants to like make their home, home cooked diets, um, but at least you're getting like the supplement added to it. Um, I hope that answers the question. Number two, is it better to feed the same thing every day or switch it up each meal? Um, this is from at Moki and Mani. Um, if your dog has a super, super sensitive stomach, you for sure have to transition them on and off between different foods. What I would suggest is start off using, uh, if, if you want to switch it up on your dog's food, start off using it like toppers or treats, whatever you're going to use. This way you're allowing your dog to actually uh, take in the food and actually it doesn't upset their stomach because it's not a drastic change. But ideally, you do want to switch up your dog's food. Reason behind that is, think of a dog on the street. A dog on the street doesn't eat the same thing day in, day out. Or at the same time, they don't have set times to eat. Nine o'clock doesn't come and they say, oh, it's time for breakfast. Um, so it's definitely, you definitely want to switch up your dog's food. Um, one, it prevents, they say it prevents allergies from building up because you're not feeding the sole same protein. That's one thing. Two, um, each meat has a different amino acid complex, so you're allowing your dog to basically absorb new nutrients. Um, and then three, I mean, your dog doesn't get tired of eating the same thing. Number three, I was once told that male cats shouldn't eat fish products. Is this true? Um, in general, I would say you should strongly push for more bland proteins or meats like turkey, chicken, beef, uh, rabbit I would you can do fish but I would avoid doing so much fish the reason is mercury is one of the I get I would say like one of the red flags that's one thing and then two I strongly feel that if you're doing fish majority of the time that's also what makes a dog like a cat much more finicky if you think about it you're feeding something cats aren't even supposed to eat fish like they don't find think of a big cat in the wild there's no fish in the safari if you think of like a lion or a cougar but the other thing is um feeding solely like fish uh products they they're so pungent in taste and smell that i feel like that's what makes a cat even more finicky um when it comes to eating so think of eating even giving a kid candy and then you try to move into broccoli the candy's so sugary and stuff that it kind of like the kid won't want to eat their veggies. <laughs> um, what supplements should you give 
a dog if they're on a raw diet or is it already balanced this is from at Winston the Brussels oh I love Brussels um but all right so what supplements ideally I've met dogs who are great on raw diets um they don't need any supplementation and then I've met dogs who are on the very best raw diets and then for some reason have like a dry coat um every dog's different so you may have to supplement with some and you may not um all the raw diets that we carry are actually complete and balanced um each brand goes through their own process of ensuring that there's um that they're complete and balanced and the type of vitamins that they may be adding into their their food um my dog has a huge amount of poop uh, no soft stool though should i be concerned uh no you shouldn't be concerned if you're feeding majority kibble that's pretty ideal um i would say just try it. you can actually cut some of the kibble out and then add some of the raw and that'll actually probably minimize your dog's poop um but big poop isn't a big concern um is it okay to mix raw food and kibble there's a lot of controversy behind this because of the way foods process one food takes uh it's easier to process over another um i would say if you can separate them that'd be great so i would probably do kibble in the morning and then raw food at night um and the reason behind it is kibble takes longer to break down as opposed to the raw food where it's more bio bioavailable and easier to break down and absorb um if you were gonna top off with anything, I would say top off with like bone broths. Dude, goat's milk is great. And the reason is goat's milk's a liquid and it's a complete food. So you're adding freshness into your dog's food, which is pretty cool. This is more freshness. Um, and even these elixirs are pretty cool. Um, the concept behind the elixirs is they all have probiotics. Each one has a, caters to a different ailment. So this one would be specifically for joints or skin and coat. There's one, like, like I mentioned before, that's specifically for uh, digestion. So it does fiber, bone broth, and probiotics. And then there's an immune one, which does uh, mushrooms, greens, pork broth, and probiotics. Um, wait, so to answer that, I would probably say feed the dog separate. If you can, that's actually, it won't harm the, the dog. I, I did that at one point with my bulldog and um, Think of it like adding like the salad to your dog's diet. So you're adding some freshness, some freshness as opposed to feeding solely Cheerios. Um, is human food not healthy? No, human food is actually real food, but you have to be weary about what you're adding into your, your human food. So if it's, you want no spices, no like heavy oils, I guess. And But um, if you can feed bland, real human food that's real food i would totally do that um and you can do that like a topper or a snack a treat um do dogs need grain-free diets dogs that depends on the dog um i'll give you an example so i had an english bulldog and my dog was actually dropping a lot of weight because he was super active and i had to go between half uh, a food that had some grain and then in addition to that i did a combination of uh, Zewi peak because it was very uh, nutrient dense and it picked up my dog's weight back up. So it really depends on the dog. Um, from my experience, one of the things that I've noticed is if a dog does need grains, it's probably because they have a super sensitive stomach or they're burning through their food super fast. Um, grains aren't bad. You just want to make sure that you're feeding your dog whole grains as opposed to like refined or cheap grains that your dog doesn't really need. So, um, yeah. Um, so that really depends on dog. Sorry, that question came from at um, Carolina Tutu. Um, my cat seems to be bored of his food. How can I make his meal a bit more interesting? And this is from at Cecilie. Um, how to make your cat's uh, food more enticing? Try the paw thing. Um, that should probably get your cat to try different foods. If you're just solely putting cat food out a lot of times they won't go into it but um other great toppers the goat's milk is actually a popular one with cats uh bone broth would be another one and then i would say healthy spot carries like certain toppers nulo actually has some great ones that are 
like one or two ingredients, um, but those are great. They're easy toppers for your cat side. Um, all right, how to feed dogs with a sensitive GI. Dogs who have extremely sensitive uh, like stomachs or GIs, you always wanna start with diets that are super easy on a stomach and I would say Open Farms one of them. Where's the other one? Oh. Pure dog food does a great one that's actually really easy on the stomach. And even then, like I've met multiple dogs who have extreme, every case is different, but some of these would work great with a dog who has extremely sensitive stomachs. And then with others, you can do something like this, mix them with this. Um, honestly, you kind of have to play around with food to kind of figure it out, but It'll take some time, but once you figure it out, then you can sl slowly start introducing different things so that your dog can become accustomed to it. Um, all right, and last question. Um, tell me about warming, cooling, and neutral proteins. Um, this is from Michelle, A-U-B-A. -A. Um, all right, so in Eastern medicine, there's uh, certain cooling and warming effects when it comes to meats and even certain foods. Um, not to get too much into it because it might confuse people, but uh, Primal is a great example of one of the brands that does it. Um, so if you notice here, some of the meats have warming, cooling, or neutral effects. What does that mean is they, it almost gives your dog like a chemical balance where it helps either cool them off or warm them up. The ex best example would be, think of a bulldog, a pug, like smush faces. They have a harder time um, cooling off so for those type of dogs, you'd wanna feed them like a cooling meat. Uh, the two cooling meats that Primal has are rabbit and duck. Um, you can also feed neutral meats such as like beef, uh, pork. And then for dogs who are always like shivering, um, like chihuahuas are always, uh, I guess you can say like scared, uh, you can feed those dogs um, warming meats. So you have like chicken, I believe turkey, um, foods like that. Um, cool. Uh, if you need any nutrition consultations, you can email us. Uh, you can actually email me directly too. Uh, my email is uh, uriel at healthyspot.com. Um, don't forget to tag us on your nutrition quiz. And then also don't forget to jump on those $10, uh, $10 off for your food purchase so you can get your free bone broth as well. Um, cool, man. Thanks for joining me. Um, this is my first one, so I hope to do another one, maybe more in depth. So thank you guys. If you guys have any, have any questions, uh, just feel free to shoot uh, more emails to yurio at healthyspot.com. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. This is end now.